Hey, now that Angular signals have been out for a while, there are patterns emerging. In this video, we'll walk through one such pattern for managing state with signals. This Redux-like pattern leverages the best of signals and RxJS. Let's take a look. I'm in StackBlitz. To see where we're going, let's start with the completed application. The drop-down selection box displays a list of team members. Pick one, and we see a loading indicator, that person's name in the header, and the list of tasks or to-do items. We can mark tasks as completed, and checking the checkbox here filters the list to only the incomplete tasks. Cool! Let's start back at the beginning and code this thing. Here is my starter project. Notice that in the starter project, the template elements are here, but nothing happens when I select a team member. This project has some of the details already in place, like the templates and styles. We use event binding here for the select box, here for the checkbox, and here when a to-do's completed status is changed. The template binds to signals here, 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 and here. In the component, I've declared enough code so the template compiles, but notice the values are hard-coded and the methods are empty. We'll fix that in a moment. I've created the service for the to-dos, but it doesn't have much code. Let's jump in. We start with state. What state or data does our to-do service need to manage? Well, we already have the interface for a to-do item or task. But that's not enough. Let's define all the state needed by our component. Scrolling down, we'll call it to-do state. We want an is loading flag so we can display a loading indicator. We need the current selected member so we can display their name. It's of type user or undefined because it's undefined until the user selects a team member. We need the list of to-dos for that member, which is an array. And let's track an error message if something goes wrong. To ensure the page starts in a valid state, let's define initial values for our state. Here at the top, we define a private variable that I'll call state. The current recommendation is that data displayed by the component should be defined as a signal. So we declare our state as a signal that holds our to-do state and we set the initial value to an instance of that state. Initially, is loading is false. We don't yet have a current member, so I'll set it to undefined. With no current member, we have no member to-dos to display, so we'll specify an empty array. And at this point, we hopefully don't have an error, so set it to null. Notice that we've made this state private. We don't want the component code to know how to access the signal. And we want the service to control all updates to this data. This makes the data flow cleaner and maintenance and debugging easier. We'll instead define properties that return each piece of state. I'll start with an isLoading property. I'll set it to a computed signal that returns the isLoading property from our state signal. We access it by calling this dot state and open the box by using parentheses to reference the state object from the signal. Then we access its isLoaded property. I'll repeat that for the current member, the todos, and the error message. Using terminology from Redux and NGRX, these are called selectors. A selector selects a specific piece or slice of our state. Now our component can select the state it needs as a computed signal. Our next step is to define our actions. We start with the action of selecting a team member from the select box. In the service, we react to that selection action by performing a set of operations, including getting the to-dos for the selected user. Getting those to-dos requires an HTTP call, which is asynchronous. It would be nice if we could create a computed signal for this, but we can't perform an async operation in a computed signal. And it's recommended that we don't change state from an effect. So what do we do? This is where RxJS comes in. 
Anytime we need to react to an action by performing an async operation, RxJS is there for us. We want a subject that reacts every time a user selects a team member from the select box. In our example, the select box value is the user ID of the selected member, so a number. I'll call the subject selected ID subject and define it as a new subject that emits a number. We define an observable from that subject using as observable. Now let's create a method that the component can call that will emit the user ID into our subject. I'll call it get to dos for member. It takes in the user ID of the selected member. In the method, we access the subject and call next to emit that ID. Now we're ready to react to that emission. Here in the constructor, we use the observable part of that subject, then process the emissions through a series of operations using an observable pipeline. Note that I did this out of habit. I'm used to exposing the observable portion of the subject to the component for binding using an async pipe. Now that the component doesn't need to access this variable, we really don't need it. We could instead listen for emissions directly from the subject here, but I'll keep it as it is. Now, what do we want to do? When the user selects a team member, we set the loading indicator. That way the template can let the user know that it's processing the action. I'll use the RxJS tap operator. We could add the code here to set the loading indicator, but to keep our pipeline a bit cleaner, let's call a method, set loading indicator, and pass in true. We'll write the code for this method shortly, so ignore the error message for now. Next, we use the emitted ID to find the user data for the selected team member. I'll use tap again and call a method, set current member, passing in the ID. There is a performance hit for every operator in our pipeline, so when we're ready to tune this application, we could combine these into one tap operator that calls two methods, but this is good enough for now. Next, we issue our HTTP request to get the to-do items for this user. We'll need a higher order mapping operator to map and flatten our result, so we'll use switch map. If you aren't familiar with switch map, Check out the video linked above and in this video's notes. We use the provided ID and again call a method passing in that ID. This method will issue the HTTP request and handle any error. I'll add a delay here. We, of course, wouldn't do this in a real application, but in this example, we want enough time for our loading indicator to show up. Lastly, we need to subscribe to start listening for emissions and process the return data. When the to-dos are returned, we set them into our state by calling another method. But there is something missing here. Any guesses? I'll give you a hint. The first rule of subscriptions is, if you subscribe, you should always unsubscribe, that's right. We'll use take until destroyed to ensure that this observable is finalized when this service is destroyed. If you aren't familiar with take until destroyed, see this prior video linked above and in this video's notes. So, when the user selects a team member from the select box, the component calls this method. This method emits that member's user ID into the subject. That user ID is then emitted into this pipeline and processed. Now it's time to write all these methods. The majority of these methods define how the action should update state. I'll scroll down. For example, the setLoadingIndicator method takes in whether the data is loading. It then updates our state with the provided value. Since state is a signal, we update it by calling its update method. That method gives us the existing state and we use the arrow function to define and set new state. That state is an object, but if we just type in curly braces, the arrow function thinks we are defining a multi-line function, so we add parentheses around the curly braces. Then we use the spread operator to copy the existing state to the new state and make any other changes, in this case setting the isLoadingIndicator from the passed-in value. 
If you aren't familiar with this technique or spread syntax, check out my video, Understanding Immutability in JavaScript, linked above and in this video's notes. In Redux terminology, this code is called a reducer. A reducer defines how an action should update state. Next is the setCurrentMember method. I'll paste the code. Here, we call the user service to get the member by ID. The user service retains the list of all team members that it uses for the select box. It finds the selected user in that list and returns it. We then use the same technique to update the signal, creating new state from existing state. We set the currently selected team member. And since we haven't yet retrieved the to-dos for that team member, we set it to an empty array to clear it. The getToDos method is next. I'll paste it. This code calls HTTP get and uses a parameterized query to retrieve the to-dos for the selected team member. You can basically ignore this little bit. I'm just cutting down the size of the to-do item title strings so they fit better in my UI. And notice the catch error here. I'll paste in set error. This code again updates the signal, creating new state from existing state. In this case, it calls a function that I have down here to take an HTTP error response and massage it into an error message. Since this method is called from the catch error operator, it must rethrow an error or return a replacement observable. Here we return a replacement observable that emits an empty array. Lastly, we need the setMemberToDos method. This method updates our state, setting the return to dos and turning off our loading flag. If we wanted each of our steps to be explicit, we could modify our subscribe to call setMemberToDos and separately call setLoadingIndicator to turn off the loading indicator. I combined them here for simplicity. Looks like we're done. Scrolling up, our service provides a set of selectors that the component can reference to access the state. Scrolling back down, when the user selects a team member, the component calls this method to emit the user ID of that team member into our pipeline. Scrolling back up, this pipeline reacts and provides the functionality we need. Now let's modify the component to use our to-do service. First, we access the computed signals from our component. I'll change each of the hard-coded properties to access our service selectors. Now each component property references the appropriate computed signal selector. In the onSelected method, when the user selects a team member, we'll call the getToDosForMember method. We pass in the user ID of the selected team member, which is the value from the select box. Our server reacts to that action and updates our state. Let's give it a try. Select a team member from the list. We see the loading message. The user's name appears. And here are their tasks. Pick another one. The list is cleared. We see the loading message. And their tasks. It works. But notice that we haven't yet implemented this checkbox. The user should be able to click this checkbox and filter the list to only those items that are not completed. To implement this feature, Let's follow our pattern again. Going back to the service, what state do we need? Scrolling down, let's add an incomplete only property to this interface to track the state of this checkbox. Scrolling up, we'll set its initial value to false. Initially, all to-do items should appear. Next, we define the selector. We use a computed signal to add a slice of state and expose the incomplete only property. Now we're ready to define an action. Our action is the user toggles this checkbox to filter the list. And we want to react to that action by, well, filtering the list. For our selection action, we used an RxJS subject to provide notification because the reaction required an HTTP request. For this new action, we could do the same. We could define a subject and emit into that subject when the user toggles this checkbox. But we already have the current list of to-dos for the member, so we don't need to issue another HTTP request. All we need is to filter the to-dos we already have. And we can do that with a computed signal. 
will define a filtered to do's property as a computed signal. I'll paste the code. If the incomplete only signal is true, we filter the list of to do's to only those that have the completed property set to false. Otherwise, we return the entire list of to do's. How do we know when to use a subject and when to use a signal? Here's a general rule of thumb I use. If the action requires a reaction involving an asynchronous operation, such as an HTTP request, use a subject. If the reaction is synchronous, like filtering a list of data we already have, use a computed signal or effect. Lastly, we define a reducer that updates the state when the action occurs. Scrolling down, I'll paste the code. This method takes in a Boolean property, and we update the state with the passed-in filter value using the same technique we've been using. Updating this signal changes the value of our selector. Scrolling up. If this computed signal is read in the template, then it's recalculated when any of its dependent signals change. So when we change the incomplete only piece of state, our computed signal changes and our filtered to-dos are recomputed. To finish up, we'll make a few changes to our component. We change the to-dos for member to reference the filtered to-dos. This is the list of to-dos that will be filtered or not based on the checkbox. And we add code to the onFilter method to call our to-do service filter to-dos method. We pass in the check state of the checkbox. Trying it out, select a team member. We see the loading message, then the list of tasks. Click the Show Only Incomplete Tasks checkbox. And our list only shows the incomplete items. It works! But notice that if I mark one of the to-do items as done, the item isn't filtered out of the list. Bummer. That's because we haven't yet implemented an update to the task completion status. We've covered so much in this video, I'll cover the update action in a future video. So, if you've used Redux or NGRX, you may recognize aspects of this pattern. We start by creating a signal for the state we need for our template. Here we set the initial state, then we define selectors, those pieces of state we want to expose to the components. Next we define the actions, and for each action we implement a reducer to modify the state. What do you think of this pattern? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.